All right, cognitively, we all know the health risks associated with smoking, but those of us who try to stop can tell you it's difficult to do so. Well, for those seeking a greater reason to quit the habit, your pets could also be suffering. Our pet vet, Dr. David Visser, joins us to talk about the risk of cigarettes and overall tobacco products around our pets. Good morning, doctor. Good morning. You know, it is an important thing for people to be aware of. Uh, some people just won't give up smoking for themselves or their own health, but they'll do it for their pets. So we want to focus on why it's important for pets to be healthy and why smoking is, uh, is a risk for their overall health. And I'd be remiss if I did not introduce uh, my buddy here. This is uh, one of my two dogs. A lot of the audience knows the uh, news dog. I call this one the show dog. <laughs> as opposed to the news dog who is the junkyard dog but uh, and this is atlas so. he has welcomed me well this morning yeah, he, so i'm really excited about that you know you just me. never know do they think i'm a veterinarian do they think i brought needles with me uh no not the case uh, this is a very open and accepting dog so let's talk i mean when you think about the secondhand smoke mm -hmm. i mean we don't have dogs that are actually smoking so we're talking about secondhand smoke um th there are real risks yeah, well, they share the same air that we breathe. Um, they're going to inhale smoke in the same manner as we do. Um, it may be lower in concentration than by direct drawing from the lit cigarette, but research has shown that pets can actually develop lung pathology or changes attributable to living in a smoker's home. And for pets, it's actually one degree worse because that debris that's in the air, you know, we all see that stuff around, that dust, it also lands on their coat. And, of course, dogs naturally uh, groom themselves, cats even more intensely than that, and that causes causes them to ingest those carcinogens, uh, creating an even greater exposure. So what kind of problems can that result in? Well, uh, secondhand smoke exposure in, in pets is associated with oral cancer. As we talked about, they're getting a greater concentration there. It can cause lymphoma in cats, um, lung and nasal cancers in dogs. It's even been associated with lung cancer in pet birds. Um, so one study at Colorado State, this stood out to me as I was researching this, it showed that the increased incidence of nasal cancers was specifically found among the long-nosed breeds of dogs. More filtering going on there, whereas the shorter or medium-nosed dogs had a higher higher incidence or higher rate of lung cancer. So, and, and uh, you know, uh, we all know how difficult cancers are to treat in humans, mm -hmm. uh, and I suspect that's, that's every bit as bad when we talk about our cats and yeah. dogs. It, it's a frustrating situation. Cancer management is a very difficult uh, arena, no matter what the cause uh, or where it is. Um, but we have several ways to treat cancerous conditions in pets, but as these studies imply, prevention really is going to be the best tip overall. Okay, so what about other kinds of nicotine products that people use? I mean, you think about the, the oral tobaccos and stuff. Yeah, these are all contain nicotine, and nicotine poisoning is a real concern anywhere that pets can find or eat tobacco or nicotine-containing products. And the list of products continue to grow as people are trying to kick that smoking habit. Uh, these are a few sources of exposure that curious pets could have. Eating an entire pack of cigarettes or whole cigars may not seem logical, but of course, you know, we know dogs taste first and suffer the consequences later, but it can also be an exploring dog's nose that leads them to eat cigarette butts, or chewing tobacco, just when they're out on a walk. And nicotine gum or patches that can attract dogs uh, and cats equally, they got those flavor additives mm -hmm. that kind of bring the attention to them. But a single cigarette contains between 9 and 30 milligrams of nicotine. And the butt of a used cigarette still has about 25% of that original amount of nicotine that the entire cigarette had before burning. Uh, it's just an example. Uh, a 40-pound dog, for instance, can get sick from just eating one cigarette, but it may take 10 cigarettes for the situation to be fatal. And yes, this can be a fatal situation. And cigars, of course, have more nicotine content. Uh, it might not take as much for them to start showing signs. Okay, so what what sort of signs are we likely to see if, if an animal has ingested one of these nicotine yeah, products? Yeah, I think that's important to realize that, uh, you know, uh, that may not uh, show any signs initially, but toxic amounts of this nicotine exposure can cause tremors, drooling, a lot of um, nerve stimulation related things, vomiting, diarrhea as the digestive tract gets stimulated, and with high exposures, pets can progress into seizures, they can have collapsing episodes, as I mentioned, it can be fatal as well. Now, it can take up to an hour before these signs typically develop, so it's important that vomiting be induced early on, and that can be life-saving. So your veterinarian should be contacted right away if you've seen your pet eat these products or that they're showing any of these signs. It's really important to get an early jump on this. All right, so uh, 
We already had a lot of good reasons to kick the habit, and now we've got an additional one, or depending on how many animals we have, all kinds of additional exactly. reasons. Exactly. Yeah, so. You know, for sure. And, and, you know, this is an important time, as any, to discuss concerns over a rising number of cases of pets being exposed to marijuana and cannabis products. Their higher sensitivity to the active ingredient makes them especially susceptible to that toxicity. But, you know, with smoking, like I said earlier, some people won't stop for themselves, but they're willing to stop for their pets. Mm -hmm. So realize that it's not such an innocent situation for your pets, and if you're looking for that encouragement, kick that habit. All right, <laughs> all good. And you, you mentioned cannabis. You know, Now I think a lot of the kids are getting it in these edibles, and oh, yeah. they're probably attractive to animals as well. So. You know, it's just it, all of the things that make it enjoyable for us. They're very much like us in their, in their pursuits. We just have, really have to be careful about what we're leaving out and about because others, not even just our pets, but our kids too, just lots of exposures possible. All right, so if you want to reach Dr. Visser, you can reach out to him at the Center for Animal Health. The number is 888-PETS-VETS, or you could always shoot him an email at michianapetvet at comcast.net. We do, do hope you'll stick around for more of 16 News Now on a Saturday morning. We'll be right back in just a moment. There's Schmatless, the show dog. <laughs>